Lash, and I'm inside Hub Culture's Ice House. It is Davos, it's 2017, looking at the future of health and artificial intelligence. Thanks so much for coming along. Thank you for having me. Andre Goy, now you're the chairman of the John Thur Cancer Center. Correct. Tell me a little bit about how you see issues within healthcare. What's the problem that you're trying to solve? I think everyone agrees that healthcare is going to change radically, and there's a number of reasons why healthcare will change and has to change radically. So some of these factors are the fact that sustainability, you know, aging in the population, burden of non-communicable chronic disease, and the cost of healthcare that's not sustainable. That's one piece. The second piece is that the digitalization of our society and healthcare as well makes the communication very different, big data and all that is all the second aspect. And the third thing is that the explosion of innovation in medicine, from the number of novel therapies, two-thirds of the pipeline of medicine is in oncology. According to some estimates, it's about 9,000 new drugs. Immunotherapy that is radically already changing healthcare and cancer by harnessing the immune system. As you know, in cancer, we have amazing results, including in solid tumors. And finally, ways now to appreciate and approach better the diversity of cancer. So patients are very different, even with the same cancer. So when you pull all this together, all these factors that converge are forcing us to change healthcare. So tell me what you're doing specifically in the, in the realm of artificial intelligence and cancer care. So I think this is, when I talked about the fact that healthcare has to change radically, this generates a lot of anxiety. And I think it's a great opportunity to reinvent healthcare. And obviously big data and artificial intelligence will be very important. So we have a lot of work going on in our center trying to look at trying to improve the outcome of patient. One of the things that comes in healthcare, the most urgent aspect is controlling the cost. That's not sustainable. And there's multiple ways to look at that. Either ration care, which we don't want to do. We want to focus on improving the outcome. So how do you improve the outcome? Mm -hmm. In order to improve the outcome, you have to be able to measure what you do. Mm -hmm. So if you measure what you do at the individual patient level, the granularity, then you can actually start to look at what's happening in the real world. Mm -hmm. And you need to look at big data, but in a real world setting, not just in large academic centers. So this is really important to have both. So when we are able to now measure taking big data, you actually try to reduce the biological variance. That means stratify patients mm -hmm. based on their clinical, biological, molecular markers at diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So you can try to advise a patient what's the best treatment. Mm -hmm. And so it's one of the first steps for precision medicine, right? Mm -hmm. Often when we think of precision medicine, we think of on how we're going to add one omics. There's 400 omics, genomics, pharmacoeconomics, metallobolomics, etc. So this gives you a lot more data and a lot more cloud and a lot more confusion in some ways. Mm -hmm. So if you're able to really look at what is baseline, in very well established clinically, biologically to stratify patients, you can start to compare Apple with Apple when you compare patients and therefore be relevant when you look at the outcome, differential outcome. And this is sort of the platform basis to try to move forward towards the direction of precision medicine. So we just announced our uh, partnership with Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center and the John Terry Cancer Center as a whole in a partnership together to go at scale with this process. And given the number of patients that we have by bring, bringing our technologies, and they also use Watson as well, mm -hmm. working together with a company, Coda, that we uh, started to work together and that we founded, is to try to really identify on how we can really do precision medicine at scale. Mm -hmm. And I think this is going to be where the future is. If you can advise a patient what's the best treatment, this is going to be really important mm -hmm. for multiple reasons. Because by improving the outcome, better medicine, better decision, better outcome, you reduce the cost along the way by removing the wrong decision. This is important because it is estimated that almost one third of what we spend in medicine, particularly in oncology, has no impact or very little impact on the outcome because it's done at the end of life. And that's very relevant in the context of the cost of some of these novel therapies. So if you have a confirmation based on real world data that you have a real long clinical benefit, you can actually shift the cost and bring this much earlier instead of giving therapies that have no impact on the future. Thank you so much for stopping by the Hub Culture Pavilion. I'm Edie Lush.